Welcome to the um, March 10th, 2020 Special City Council meeting. Um, please let the record reflect that all council members are present. I believe Council Member Blair is here um, somewhere. So hopefully he will come up soon. Um, with, um, with that issue, uh, Council Member Adolski, would you mind leading the pledge? Yes, please. Thank love you. To, uh, please rise and join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. And then we have the approval of minutes. We have the closed session of October 1st, 2019, joint session of October 16th, 2019, and joint session of December 17th, 2019. Council Member Lopez? Yes, Chair, they're correct. And the regular meeting of October 22nd, 2019, Council Member Heyer? Yes, I've reviewed those and found them to be accurate. And the joint session of November 12th, 2019, and special meeting of November 12th, 2019, Council Member White? Yes, Chair, they're correct. And the regular meeting of January 7th, 2020, Council Member Nadolski? Thank you, Chair, they reflect my recollection. And the regular meeting of December 17th, 2019, joint session of January 7th, 2020, special meeting of January 7th, 2020, and the so joint session of January 14th, 2020, Council Member Stevens. Yes, they're correct, and I'm make a <coughs> excuse me. I make okay. a proposal that we adopt the minutes that has been presented. Thank you, Council second. Member. And a second. So we have a motion by Council Member Stevens and a second by Council Member Lopez to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much, and thanks for all that extra reading it looks like you had, Councilmember Stevens. Now we'll have the public hearing a presentation um, from for the fiscal years 2020 to 2024 capital improvement plan amendment. Chair, we're going to have um, Greg Montgomery and Lisa Stout make those presentations. We also have Taylor and Bryant here to answer questions if there are questions they can't answer. Thank you. Thanks so much. Good evening, Council. Um, the first part of this is a amendment to the 2019-2023 uh, capital improvements uh, plan to add AR093 that still is at the airport. And what this is is uh, an amendment to the plan to allow the uh, development and construction of a water tank at the airport. This is needed for fire flow uh, as, as the airport looks to develop and expand. Uh, that fire flow capacity is needed, uh, not only for one project, but for several projects that could happen at the airport. And because this was not in the plan, uh, we needed an amendment to address that so that funding could be allocated uh, for the development of the tank, which is a, a time uh, critical as the airport expands. The Planning Commission reviewed this, and as they looked at it, this was consistent with the general plan. It dealt with the, uh, the ability to provide for the growth of the airport and met those uh, strategies that are found in the general plan. And so the Commission recommended approval unanimously on, on this as a, a proposed amendment. And then Lisa. Any questions for Greg before uh, Lisa this, steps this, up? I was okay. with the Planning Commission last week. These were the two items that you were uh, singling out as not in harmony with the general plan until they're passed, right? No, this this is something the Planning Commission looked at in December. Okay. So those two were something that's in the future CIP that will be coming to you okay. later okay. on. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for clearing that up. Yep. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you, Greg. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you, council members. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, in connection with the um, <clears throat> amending the CIP plan for fiscal year 20, uh, there is a budget action to appropriate 250000 to this project. 
um, moving it out of the CIP fund uh, where we had appropriated 250000 for parking lot improvements at the airport in 2017. Uh, that project has not come to fruition, and the priority would be to uh, assist this development, the Northeast Fire Flow. Uh, so we're asking the council to move the 250000 from the CIP to the airport. That 250000 would be used for um, design and engineering work. And then once we know, have a good estimate of costs, we would come back for an appropriation for construction funds. Uh, again, here's the CIP brief. This is for a water tank in the northeast area for specifically for fire flow. Um, <clears throat> oops. And here's a picture of, of where it would be uh, approximately where that tank would be. Do you have any questions regarding the budget action? Jerry, I have a couple questions. Please. Um, my first question is, um, so is the $250,000 CIP project for the parking lot being taken off the list completely? Uh, when, so uh, right now the CED is working on a master plan for the airport. When that comes to council and we have a better idea of, of the needs of, of the infrastructure at the airport, new CIPs would be proposed that better outline the needs out there. And then if, quick, another question. So I was confused um, where the airport is an enterprise fund, correct? Mm -hmm. um, I was confused that the CIP is actually coming out of our general fund. Can you explain why that is happening? So currently the airport cannot sustain its operations. Uh, the council has the authority to support enterprise funds from transfers from uh, the general obligation or the general funds of the city. Um, we are proposing that this is actually moved to the airport because it is on Air FAA ground and needs to be an asset of the airport. And then, sorry, one more question. Nice. So um, then, how can you explain to me why it's not coming out of our water and sewer so, enterprise funds? So specifically, this is for fire flow for this specific area. That possibly could be a source of funding. Uh, the council has set aside uh, money in uh, CD086, uh, specifically for infill and development projects. Once we know the construction costs and the needs uh, of that fund, we'll evaluate um, if, if, if funds from the water fund would be needed. So will the construction of the water tank come from the water fund then? Um, Lisa, maybe we can have Gary answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> will mm, will the <laughs> funds for the construction of the water tank come from the water fund? Why does it come from the water fund? Oh, what, what it? Uh, the money for the construction of the water tank uh, would that come from the water fund at that time? I, I don't know what fund is coming from. So, so he's, they're, they're saying, why isn't the water fund funding this tank at the airport? And, and since legal's been discussing this, I felt you were probably better to answer this question than maybe Lisa or I. I understand the question correctly. It's not coming from the water fund? Is that what it is? Uh-huh. <laughs> The reason why it wouldn't be coming from water fund is because it's not a water delivery system. Okay. It's, it's, it's not a what? It's not delivery. a water delivery system in the sense that oh, it's not okay. water. Mm -hmm. So can I ask a clarifying question, Chair? Sorry. Oh, please. Is that, <laughs> sorry, is that was in the way? Um, so does that mean that if we approve the CIP in this 250 for study that the construction in the future cannot come from the water fund because of that? <clears throat> to be honest, we have discussed it both ways. It depends on it, if it can be, if it can be fashioned to have a multi-use purpose. Mm -hmm. So for example, we've talked about the concept of there might be a need for water storage at the airport that would benefit the water system. And in that case, if a determination was made mm -hmm. and you could have a dual purpose, then then it could come from the water fund, but that has not been determined at this time. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. So right now the primary pur purpose is just the aeronautical purpose um, to, to support that activity. But if it ever had a dual purpose, then, then it could come from the water fund. And Lisa, if you don't mind if I clarify, but this um, actual budgetary amendment action is just for the study at this point, correct? For the engineering and design. Mm -hmm. Engineering design study, and then that'll scope out the project, and then additional, I guess, action will come forward. Correct. Uh, okay. I, I was wondering, I'm just, does it, <clears throat> do you have any concerns about where the funds come from, or just curious? What what you ask about? Why I'm asking? Time. Well, because it's specifically designed for the airport, and and because it's in, sitting in an airport enterprise fund, why is it not? Why are we not allocating the money from the airport fund? And she answered that because we would end up having to. We're broke. Use the general fund anyways <laughs> to but it, pay for that. that. Okay, but it is very well, relevant, words, Lisa. It, and in light of the. Future construction cost. If that's why I asked my for the clarification. If if the legal interprets that we can't use water funds for this because of it's a airport asset, then right. I don't know if that's a interpretation or a rationalization. But uh, <laughs> two hundred fifty thousand dollars of the general funds a lot for a general mm -hmm. fund. Um, I mean, it's a lot from the water fund too, but. Um, so, I actually, I'm having questions suddenly that I didn't have before, so I appreciate yours, your Sorry. questions. No, I appreciate it. It's making me think of different things. But it doesn't not, it doesn't, just because we use the, this money out of this pocket now doesn't mean that it would prohibit us from using it out of a different fund if... That's true. If we could use it for dual purposes. That's right. So, Chair, can I Please. ask another question? Different. A little different. It's more for transparency. Yeah, and it might not be for you. I'm not sure. So I'll ask it and we'll all decide. <laughs> Should I go? <laughs> but, well, there's a lot of talk about CIP right now and prioritization process, et cetera. So I want to ask, um, this, the original CIP went through the budget process where we, you know, we prioritized our CIP and then we went through the budget and we mm -hmm. funded as many on the top that we could. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Um, this one just takes the place of that one. So it didn't go through the normal prioritization process. It's just going straight to funding. It's replacing the one that we already prioritized and funded and then go straight to the funding decision. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Administration felt this rose to a level to um, go outside the normal process that this was something that they wanted to propose funding for. So you're right. It didn't go through the normal prioritization process. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Great. Um, so now we have public input on this item alone um, for the 2020-2024 capital improvement plan. Um, so it would be specifically about this particular fire flow project at the airport. Please step forward and uh, state. Both of these items all right. I'm sorry? The public input would be for either one of those items. Right, the, pub, the budget amendment as well. Right. Thank you, yeah, for that Thank clarification. You. Either one of these items, but specific to the fire flow project. Um, so public input would be for three minutes each and just state your, state your name when you come up to the microphone. No movement. Got it? Great, well, thank you. Um, so I'd be happy to take any motions if anybody would like to propose one. Um, given it's a public hearing, we'll need the motion to close the public hearing. Oh, I'm too. sorry. Sorry. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. Second. Uh, we have a motion to close the public hearing from Councilmember Lopez and a second by Councilmember Dodalski. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. Now we can uh, consider some action. Chair, I would make a motion that we adopt uh, Ordinance 2020-8. Second. So we have a motion uh, by Councilmember Heyer and a second by uh, Vice Chair Blair on proposed Ordinance 2020-8. This is a roll call vote. 
Council Member Nadalski? No. Council Member Heyer? Aye. Council Member Lopez? Aye. Council Member Stevens? Aye. Council Member White? No. Vice Chair Blair? Aye. Chair Jaburka? Aye. So that passes. Any action on the next item? I'll make a motion then that we uh, adopt Ordinance 2020-9. Second. We have a motion by Councilmember Heyer and a second by Councilmember Lopez on proposed Ordinance 2020-9. This is also a roll call vote. Councilmember Heyer? Aye. Councilmember Lopez? Aye. Councilmember Stevens? Aye. Councilmember White? No. Councilmember Nadalski? No. Vice Chair Blair? Aye. Chair Jaburka? Aye. And that passes. Would um, council members like to discuss their no vote? Yeah, I just think, um, and, and I expressed this, I think, in the work session a little bit and, and further with some of our staff, but I just, I think for some transparency, we need to uh, e either have some sort of, I don't know, payback loan kind of, it, I don't know what the, what the appropriate mechanism is for this. Um, I am I think we need the, the fire flow out there. I don't think that that's it, the problem. The problem is, is that I just don't know that this is the right mechanism. And then to move it up in front of something when, um, yeah, just to move it up in front of something is not the appropriate process, I guess. So that was where I was at. Um, I, I actually hadn't arrived planning to vote no, or, or leaning toward it anyway. I just, I, I, I wasn't really comfortable with some of the answers. I, I don't know if, and honestly, some of the questions that Council Member White asked made me think about some things differently. And so I don't feel, I didn't feel comfortable supporting it, not because I don't, uh, that, that the project's a bad project or proposal. I just, where I'm not entirely clear is on the process that we're, I don't want to be demanding that everything follow a certain process and, unless we don't want to, and then we don't, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, in my mind, I just had enough uncertainty um, and some enough questions that I didn't feel comfortable uh, forcing myself to toe a line that I, that I can't argue later, you know? I don't know, it, it, that's probably a confusing answer, probably because I am confused. <laughs> Um, it's okay. But I just didn't. Confused. I just suddenly wasn't. I didn't. I felt like I didn't have the information I needed, and I thought I had done the homework that I needed to. To but found myself uh, not in that position, so I apologize. Yeah. But it mostly had to do with lack of clarity in the process. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I guess you know, just to clarify, as my understanding was that they were thinking about doing a payback process, but we'd do it after the design process. So yeah, I totally agree that. We should have something in mind about replacing that, that money in the fund, absolutely. Okay, so now we have time for public comments. This is an opportunity to address the council regarding any concerns or ideas. Um, just approach the um, microphone and state your name for the record, and please stay under three minutes. Hello. My name is Ethan Kendrick. Um, I represent KBR. It's a company in Ogden. I don't know if this is the right place to bring this up, but... Hey, you're here now. Yeah. We, <laughs> we would like to build new... new... Um, like new hangars at the airport for private flying, and we're... We'd like to, we're ready to break ground immediately if we can get approval. And so we're trying to, trying to get approval and find ground to rent. I know that's kind of how it works. You never own it, you really rent it. All of our planners just left. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> just thinking of people that can answer your question just left. Um, anything else? And then we can see if we have a response. But we don't want to take up your three minutes. That's pretty much it. I mean, I, I don't know the exact building plans. I know we'd like to at least build a hangar like big enough for four jets. So. Okay. Um, yeah. 
Would administration or someone else like to give him the process for how we might go about doing that? Sure. Obviously, yeah, as yeah. was uh, referenced tonight, we love development at the airport. And you're right in that um, it's leased land. You own the building, yeah. but you lease the land. And we've got a, a process to certainly put you in the queue to figure that out. Our economic development department would be happy to speak with you about that. Okay. Uh, can I speak with them today? or We can grab you after and get your contact information, and they'd be happy to give you a call tomorrow and, and figure out what your needs are and, and work on that. Okay. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thanks for coming. I was prepared to make a motion if you needed. No. <laughs> he gets a hanger. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> Welcome. How you doing? My name is George Green. I live at 2042 Lincoln Avenue, and I know this is, isn't on the agenda, but I want to talk about the Marshall White Center. I understand that you have a budget out, uh, allocated for different things that you have planned uh, for the physical year 2020, and uh, the Marshall White Center is on that, but you, it's been only allocated $90,000. They have allocated $340,000 for dog park. There's like maybe I think it's like three or $4,000 for a golf course. But you allocated $90,000 for the Marsh White Center, which is in the lower part of Ogden, which was been there since what, 68? Marshall White was killed. They named it after him. And all you can come up with is $90,000 to pour into that building. The only building with a black person's name on it in this whole state. But I understand that you want to uh, put YMCA in place somewhere to take the Marshall White Center out of place. That's my assumption that you want to move Marsh White out and let the YMCA come in and that would be the center. But that's not that's not a low-income center. That's not going to meet the needs of the people that's in Ogden. That's not going to meet the needs of the low-income people, the people that need a swimming pool, the senior citizens. So how you came up with that, I don't know. But we, 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 we expect better. In our neighborhood, we spec better down there. And and well, I live, I live right around the corner from Marsh White, and we spec better down there. We expect you to do better for the Marsh White Center. We expect you to do better by honoring Marsh White's name, so we can uh, have a center that we can go to, and it won't it won't and we can be able to afford, and a swimming pool that we can swim in, that I grew up with, and we can uh, get exercise. And the senior citizens love that swimming pool. And you have taken all that away, and you want to put your money into the YMCA. It's not fair to us. It's not fair to Ogden. Thank you so much for coming. And maybe we should explain the CIP process just a little bit. Would that be helpful, just to talk about how that process goes? Um, I'd be happy to take a stab at it, um, although I don't know if the administration wants to speak about how they um, – we actually, the council has not been transmitted that CIP plan yet that's coming up proposed, so we don't have anything to do with what's on the, currently on the list. We will prioritize it and look it over once it is transmitted. Um, I don't know if you want to speak to how that list is created. We were kind of just talking about a little bit about the past process. Do you mind? Sure. The process hasn't changed at all. We take every one of the department director's considerations and weigh all of those. Um, as we've talked about a little bit, Marshall White is not going away. We've put almost $750,000 into that in the last couple of years with a new roof and other infrastructure that's gone into there. So there's no intent to take the Marshall White away. Part of what we're trying to figure out with the pool is how much that's going to cost and where that money would come from. You know, two plus million dollars is what the engineer is telling us is a big lift. We do a five-year CIP program, and so all of our department directors put all of our needs together, and we measure every one of those needs and where we think we can either get other grant money to help with that or find ways to help, if we can, uh, leverage our money to take advantage of different opportunities as they're out. I think the airport was one of them. Moving the CIP 
from the parking lot to the water tank came as a result of a couple of unique economic development opportunities that arose. And so sometimes there is a little bit of shuffling. You can't put a five years on paper and think that you're going to make the best returns on investment and the best investments with all of your taxpayer dollars if it's just baked into a five-year program and you're not able to uh, adjust to the market as it presents itself. So it's a really dynamic process that we go into and as, as we measure that. And Church of Burke is completely correct. We put those together. They're put together months in advance that we give it to the council for consideration. And then we go through months of deliberation with the council and every director that had a CIP project has to represent that, talk about it, show that they've studied it, show that it's been measured and it's not just an emotional or a reactive decision. So we've appreciated that kind of dialogue in the past and that hasn't changed at all this year. So we appreciate your comments and we're certainly looking at that. I'm here to guarantee you that the Marshall White Center isn't going anywhere. It's just where does that money come from and what do we take off the table to put Marshall White on it? And that's a big price tag, which is why we've been working hard to study that issue. Thank you. And I also should mention I saw posted on the city Facebook page that they are taking um, people that would like to be part of the Marshall White Advisory Board. They're taking um, you know suggestions or recommendations. If anybody would like to serve on that board, you could call the number. I don't have it off the top of my head, but we could definitely get it for you. So we're going to reinstate that committee to help to kind of figure out some of these issues as well. Chair, I think Betty Sawyer is part of that committee. So they can give information to her also. Uh, no, well, not yet. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. It hasn't been um, reconvened get... just yet. Okay. But thank you for volunteering. Spoiler alert! Yeah, yeah, spoiler alert! <laughs> I mean, she's on every other committee out there she in the is, world, yeah. so she might as well. <laughs> yeah. No, Betty. No, sorry. Please go ahead with Chair, public comment. Chair, can I? Oh, sorry, please. before go I ahead. don't mean to cut off Betty because uh, public comment time. Yeah. No, I wanted to clarify on the past CIP process sure. procedure um, there's I think there's some confusion or conflation in the community that's uh, that the CIP ranking and the decision to accept or not accept etc means that we are funding those things that does not mean what we're doing I think it definitely is a part of the funding process but we're whatever decision comes out of any CIP um, in, that we're expecting to receive through Transmittal, um, the first action is not the money that comes with it. It is, however, I do understand it is a, a, a big influencer on the process. The rank that you put put them in and the rank that we, uh, uh, the dollar amount that we assign to them is 100% relevant. I just want to make sure people know that that the money decision in the budget, where the money comes from and what gets funded and what doesn't comes later in the budget process. So it's Totally relevant, but I just want to make that distinction. Right, thank you. Yep. Please, Betty. <laughs> Since you called me out, Councilman. Yeah, take the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on up. Betty Sawyer. I live at 4791 Panorama Drive, but own a home in Ogden and lived in Ogden City on 28th Street. And my kids rode their bikes and <laughs> everything else down the hill to the Marshall White Center almost every day of their lives. Um, I'm here again to, again, speak on our concern and desires for the Marshall White Center. And again, uh, knowing that the Planning Commission made some recommendations, you don't have that information yet, but we encourage you to seriously look at that. When we're talking about, you know, the planning process, I continue to hear my wonderful mayor talk about the emotional aspect of it. There's very little that we do that is void of emotion. I would dare to say that when Ogden City looked at redeveloping and, and remodeling and renovating their auditorium, uh, they were able to get people to put in money because of emotion appeal. I think people are emotionally attached to 25th Street, to the Union Station, to the golf course, to all kinds of things. And so uh, being emotionally attached to something and being passionate about something does not preclude us from being able to look at uh, sound business, community and economic development processes and how those decisions are made. So we are very much uh, ready to uh, participate in this process. Uh, we're looking at a budget that states for five years 
And by seeing nothing on that CIP for five years, just this one for some supplies, doesn't give me a good feeling in that consistent constituency that's been coming here for the last couple of years talking about this, any good faith uh, sense that you're going to make this a priority in any way. And uh, one of my oldest mentees, uh, mentors in the state of Utah first told me, don't watch what a person says, watch what they do. The other thing he reminded me of constantly was to follow the money again. And so if I look at a five-year plan and see a one-time $90,000 for some bicycles, cabinets, and weight equipment, what am I to think? Where is that priority? What is this constituency to think about where the city is and their commitment to doing it? So along with this, uh, my goal and my plea to you is to meet us halfway with a good faith effort to put some significant dollars to improve, update the pool. A new facility is what we ultimately want, okay? I have my CIP list too, and it's a brand new state-of-the-art facility. But along with that, it has to start someplace, and we haven't seen the start. I understand the roof and basketball courts and all of that, but I wanna see a uh, start in terms of the swimming pool, how we're going to study getting a new facility and how our community can be a part of these deliberations so that you can help teach us as we go along, because this won't be the first or last effort that we get engaged in. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, Angel Castillo. Um, I live here in Ogden, and as you know, I'm on the Planning Commission, and this is not the first time we've talked about this. Um, I, first and foremost, I want to thank you, um, because I think the public doesn't quite understand, and maybe it's an opportunity to remind them that uh, the job that you have is really hard. Okay, you're essentially, you, all of the documents you have to read, the meetings you have to go to, the calls and the emails that you answer, both for the council and the administration, it is, it is not an easy job. If it were easy, everybody would have a pony and we'd all be happy and that, you know, it's a trick when you have to look at budgets and you come up with, there are always going to be winners and losers. And I, and I fully understand that and the community fully understands that. But um, there were about 50 people that came to the Planning Commission meeting because the CIP and the way I've been explaining it to people is the framework for the budget. If you have a jar and you're going to fill it up with stones, you're going to put the big ones on the bottom because those are the ones that are going to, you're going to get them in there, you're going to sure they're in there and they're going to fit and then you fill up the rest of the stones and then you have the process in which you can yearly budget for. And everybody's big concern was the fact that the CIP only said $90,000 and as Ms. Betty had said, that that's that's really no real commitment that says that we're going to be doing something. We've been talking about this process for two years. And I understand it's a long process, but why weren't we having these conversations a year ago? Why wasn't the consultant brought in a year ago? Um, you know, we have, this is, the CIP is about priorities. And each budget, each budget session you're going to go through, they're going to change a little bit. But the community, what I keep hearing and what all those people that came to the Planning Commission meeting said is that this is a priority. And there are multiple scenarios. You can just have the Marshall White Pool fixed. You could have the Marshall White Pool fixed with a facelift. You could have a bunch of smaller centers scattered around town. You could have a great big center on the Marshall White footprint. You could have a great big center somewhere else. But all of those scenarios involve a pool. The pool is really important, and that location is very important to the people so that they have access to it. The YMCA charges a whole lot more money than the Marshall White Center does, and it it's about accessibility. So. I know we we're talking about possibly getting a bond. I'm not necessarily sure that a bond is necessary. I mean, we have huge community anchor partners that would be willing to invest in this. I know for a fact Intermountain Health is concerned about people's health and welfare and Weber County Services. I'm sure there's a plethora of people we could bring to the table, but what this community is asking for is a flag in the sand. We're going to make a commitment. We're going to fix that pool. And maybe it will be in a modular format for a bigger center. Maybe it'll look completely different. But that community needs, needs a pool. And they want an answer because they haven't had an answer for two years. Thank you.
Yes. Hello. Good evening, Malik Dio, 26th and Jackson <clears throat> here in Ogden. Uh, good evening, everybody, and thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Uh, Marshall White Center. Um, just wanted to remind everybody one more time, and for those of you here who didn't know, um, it is the only government-owned building in Utah with a person of color's name on it, okay? Uh, we've witnessed in this city uh, people's houses being taken away from them for not being able to upkeep them, okay? Uh, at the last planning meeting I was at, I heard of a store on 28th and Monroe uh, being given 90 days to make the repairs on it or else, right? The one that's right up the street from your uh, business, Mr. Blair. Um, and we're talking about Marshall White, two years. Um, you're, you're asking a store owner here, you're giving them 90 days to straighten out their act, but you guys had more than two years to do it with Marshall White and you can't do it. You expect other people to upkeep their properties here in Ogden or else, you know, they're in jeopardy of losing their house, yet you can't upkeep this city building sounds like a double standard to me. Another thing, okay, um, Ogden City does not track traffic stops by ethnicity, okay? They would mark me as white, they would mark you, Mr. Lopez, as white. There's no way possible to determine whether or not there's traffic stops making more uh, made towards minorities than there are towards whites at this time uh, because they're lumping us all together in one group. Um, other agencies do it, um, federal agencies do it, state agencies do it. Um, I want to know why it's not being done in Ogden. It needs to be done because I know if we were to track them, there would be dis disproportionate uh, traffic stops, which lead to disproportionate arrest rates, which lead to dis disproportionate incarceration and, uh, um, and unequal justice. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Hello, Hi. Alicia Washington, um, owner of Good Company Theater, one of the organizers of the town hall conversations on race, and I just want to uh, thank you for allowing me to speak today, and also um, I'm looking forward to that transmittal coming through of the recommendation, the amendment from the Planning Commission on the Marshall White Center of allocating more funds or reviewing that budget. Um, and. It's been an interesting time from a community standpoint in hearing the whispers of what is a CIP of, I could make a really bad joke, but sorry, my dramatics are coming out. Um, <laughs> but um, what is this process? What does the planning commission do? What does city council do? What does the administration do in this regard? So I think it's a really honest time to have true transparency in how this moves forward along with how to engage a population that sometimes I hear um, local or agencies or organizations not know how to mend that gap, which is marginalized peoples or people of color within this community. Um, as Angel Castillo said, it's like we're looking for a flag in the sand. And when it comes to um, economic strategies, yes, we understand that, that we want to see the city grow in specific ways, but we also want to see um, the populations honored that have kept the city down for generations and also what these very important and iconic and um, buildings and anchors are within this community. And so that is reflective of how people have responded in that $90,000 on the CIP, uh, CIP that's been allocated for the upcoming years. Um, so take all that into consideration because it's not Sometimes it's not as clear as being in paper and like, well, this is what we have. This is what we can pull from from the general plans for the and it's listed as I think the third project down. But it is much more significant to people and people of color within this community of what that means. And if it still is a little up in the air or how to even brace that topic, use the other commissions that you have, commissioners that you have in this building, like the Diversity Commission, maybe do a joint work session with them so you can dig into it a little bit deeper than what you can at these meetings. We all know you have a lot to consider, but this is such a significant moment in the growth of the city and also in the diversity growth within this city. So I encourage you to really handle it with care. And thank you. Thank you.
Any other public comments? No? Okay. Um, so, uh, any comments from the mayor? Sure. I just add, we appreciate everybody being here in your comments, and, and the diversity piece is a huge part of what we're trying to do. We have a diversity commission. We didn't have one in the past. We have a diversity officer that's on the ninth floor right next to our CAO that is trying to help facilitate some of those conversations, and we'll admit, sometimes we don't know how to do some of that. Sometimes we don't know how to pull people out of the shadows and let us know what they need. Um, we have, and have for a long time now, said the Marshall White is a priority for us, uh, because it's not funded overly heavy this year, it isn't reflective of what we've done in the last couple of years with that. And so we'll continue the dialogue, and we look forward to the conversations. The CIP is not the budget. They're different. Uh, CIPs are nice to have. The budget is need to have. And so those are hard conversations we'll have in the upcoming months. And we're more than happy to have meetings or conversations and, and help people understand how all of that works and all of the detail that goes into this. It's not throwing darts at the in the dark. I mean, this is a, a very thoughtful and studied process, and we're more than happy to bring transparency to that. So appreciate you all being here. Appreciate your passion for the community. I look at a lot of the people in here. You all do a lot of different work that we need to have that makes community happen. And so we appreciate that. And I can just say from the administration's perspective, we respect that. And I know that this whole group here listening does as well. So I appreciate the time and, and the passion and, and we're working, we're working hard on it. So thank you for being here. Thank you. And council member comments? Chair, if I could just, so I don't get to say this all that often, but CIP falls under me and my, my, my new day job. <laughs> and I just want to, I want to, I want to get something clear. It is not the foundation of our budget. It is, um, it is, it is a, a mechanism to provide the community with some, some really detailed plans of capital expenditure needs within this, within this community. And those expenditures are for city public infrastructures transportation, parks, engineering, and you'll see that as you look at that list that comes forward. Um, and what it also does is, and the mayor said it too, is that we look for ways to help other funding mechanisms. So for instance, um, a grant from the federal government or something to help fund some of those. We have every year between 75 and $85 million on that list. We cannot fund that. We have to go through that and, and try to figure that out. And so if you look at that list, transportation, the BRT was one of the top um, on that list. And it, it, it's, in, it, it, it's for transportation, right? So we can't just say that just one asset within our, our city is, is in need. So it has to look at things like, is it gonna be long lasting? Well, without going through the study, without going through um, some of the, the advisory council stuff to find out if, if, if we're gonna build a new building, as Miss Betty said, is that long lasting? Is that money it being put to good use? And so it is not the foundation of the budget. I just want to reiterate that. It is to look at capital expenditures for the entire community. And so I just, I, I want everybody to understand that, and thank you, Mayor, for saying that, and others that say that it's not the foundation of the budget. Any other comments? I, I, yeah, I do. Uh, thanks, Chair Chaburka. <clears throat> I, I do appreciate the clarification, too, and I want to clarify my clarification, I guess. <laughs> um, what I was trying to do, and which I clearly failed into, was I, that I... I don't want the the process and so on to dismiss the the need and the um, and the community's input to us. It it may not be the foundation of the budget, and the way you described it is accurate to the way that we it is right. But there's also a number on that CIP that's ninety thousand dollars, when we all know that the need is multi millions, mm -hmm. right, for that facility. And so I, I don't make that clarification because I want to dismiss the need for the money. Um, but I think we need to be really mindful and as, as city leaders and decision makers about the difference between, um, the, the difference we're, we're drawing between 
rational and emotional. Um, I think that's really misguided for all of us because the reason this is emotional is because people care and we ought to be investing in the things that we care about. And um, it's also emotional because we haven't put a plan in place or shown or communicated to people what that investment's going to be and why, where, when, how much. And so I, I think it's, we ought to not use that term anymore, emotional, because it dismisses the need and the demand um, and our role. The, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to hold it against the community either. I just a little bit ago, I voted no on a CIP project because I wasn't clear on the process. So how in the heck, I, I've been here for four years and I've got access to all of these guys and those guys and we have the staff and I had a question about CIP process that I wasn't clear on, so I voted no. So I don't um, fault the community for not being clear either because I haven't always been clear. But what was clear and what we ought to be really, really sensitive to is the message that was sent. That, I mean, we still haven't even seen it yet, but I know what it's going to say. Um, uh, I, I am at... <sighs> I'm at the point of frustration and at the end of my my own rational ability to remain unemotional. I, I I just don't understand why we can't accelerate to a point to where we at least get answers for people. And I want an answer too. I want to know what these things are. So I just am, I'm just urging my colleagues and peers to get. We don't. We might not have to get to a number that we can afford. It might be a big number that we can't afford, but we ought to be able to get to an answer. We ought to be able to be totally open and transparent about it. And that's what, um, and if we can get to a number that we can't afford and we can make improvements and make a difference, that would be fan freaking tastic. And finally, my last point is that uh, the YMCA gets brought up a lot. And I, and I know the YMCA is not here. Um, the YMCA has been working with the administration and I just, I have had some interaction with the YMCA, both in my personal life, because my daughters are in their after school care, but in some of the initial conversations about this issue. And um, I just want to speak on their behalf because they've been nothing in my interactions, nothing but professional, nothing but transparent, nothing but caring and kind and wanting to serve and to deliver. Um, and I think it's it's not on the YMCA that, that answers aren't there. It's on us that we don't have answers. So um, I apologize for a little bit of a venting, but this is how I felt for a while. And I've made these comments in past meetings, but we've got to get to a point where we get an answer and we've got to do it transparently. And um, if we don't, this is, we know what the outcome is and it's not good enough. So. Another comment? Just as a clarification, uh, Betty has a lot of talents, and uh, I attended the Martin Luther King uh, Day, and they said, Betty Sawyer is meeting with this group, and they want some ideas about the Marshall White Center, and that's how I got that idea. But uh, if you have any ideas, I guess they can give it to you, huh, Betty? <laughs> but uh, that's just as a clarification, and maybe she ought to be on that committee. So, <laughs> That's a recommendation. Could I Please. address, I, I, I think that with regards to this issue, um, I made a comment a few months ago that, that I think, you know, we, we don't have very many answers. There's just a lot of uncertainty around this issue. And, and I, I'm going to try to enlist the rest of you as my colleagues, as in line with what Councilmember Nadolsky said, that we have an answer at the end of this budget season. Whatever it might be. We don't know what it might be yet, but let's have an answer with what the timeline's going to be, what the direction might be, um, because it is getting kind of long in the tooth. You know, this, this issue's been getting that way. Um, there has been a lot of false comparisons that have been, have been brought up, a lot of information that's not inaccurate. Uh, I came to the Planning Commission meeting the other day, there was a lot of people that felt like because they saw the, the money that was allocated in the CIP, 
that we were planning to shutter the facility, and that's just not true, as the mayor said. Um, the another one that's come up a couple times, uh, not tonight, but came up with the planning commission meeting also, is that uh, the 28th and Monroe uh, facility. It, how it compares with the Marshall White, it does not. Uh, that facility is, is out of code compliance, been running without um, approval for a while. The, it, the, those things need to be health safety and issues. And the Marshall White Center um, is completely in compliant with code. It's not, and matter of fact, the pool was closed for health and safety issues. Um, we'd be irresponsible if we had left it open. Um, so, so th those those two things just don't compare. I don't know how you can, can make make that comparison. So, I just wanted to throw that out there. But, but I, I I think it's important that that we come together on coming up with some answer. Do you have any other comments? Um, <clears throat> so I. This, this issue, uh, as many of you have expressed, uh, for me in particular, is uh, very, um, <clears throat> it just touches nerves uh, for me because I, I campaign on this issue when I run for office uh, the first time. And uh, <clears throat> my, my arguments and, and and it touches home so much that I, I I get so emotional. I get very emotional. And 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 like I said, I've learned when I speak to be able to get through my message without getting emotional. Sometimes it's hard, but it really does. It really does touches uh, my you know it, it's 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 very uh, close to my heart. And when I when I run for office and when I was campaigning on these. On this issue, I I I I, I would say that, um, as has been said by some of the people that have addressed us tonight, that you know there are many many thousands of people in our community that don't have the means to access recreation opportunities, especially in the winter, uh, to maintain. Uh, uh, health, a uh, decent uh, 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 health, and uh, both physical and mental. Right. So I used to tell the stories of what I used to do when I was growing up with when my kids were young, when my kids were three, four, or five years old, and we didn't have money to pay to go to the movies or to go to restaurants, or to go to the indoor activities, or to go skiing, or to go any of those places. So I took my kids to the McDonald's playground and to the mall's playground. And uh, that's, where, that's where my kids went to, to, to spend a little bit of, to do a little bit of exercise. And, and so the Marshall White, as, as has been said today, is that's why it's so important. And when, when there is a sense that we are, that, that, we, that for whatever reasons, that this is taking so long to make decisions on what we should do and what should happen, then the message to the community is that, is that we don't care. That's the message. It's just that simple. The message is, you know, we care about many other things that go on in the city, but we don't care. Now, I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm just saying that's the message people hear. And, and so, uh, I, I, just like you, just like you said, um, I. I, I really, really hope, like you said, Councilman Heyer, that we, we have some answers and that we have the answers. Like you said, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you by the end of, uh, before the end of the budget season. And, uh, and, and Mayor, uh, I, 
I know that you're a, a good man. I know you and I know that you're a good man. And I know everybody here, everybody that is here are, are all good people. I really believe that. Um, and and uh, when, you, when you mentioned that sometimes you don't know how to access and reach out to the people that you need to sometimes, please remember that I'm here to help and that uh, I'm available anytime. I've had conversations about this with Betty before I was on the council. Before I, before I was sworn to the council, I went and talked to Betty and I said, Betty, what, what about these? And I gave some ideas. And so, you know, my first two years on the council was very hard trying to figure it out and navigate how these works. And so, so uh, just, uh, just, just, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help and, and, I, and I think I can help. So, Thank you. Thank you. Is that everybody? Um, did you want to say anything? Chair Tabarka, would you mind if I had made additional comments? Sure. May I make a comment too? Yes. If you want to rebut? No, go ahead. You're welcome to. I can go last. Please go. Um, I just wanted to say, I mean, reiterating what all of you have said, I, I would definitely make a commitment with you to have a, a timeline of some sort by the end of this budget season. But I think we've definitely got an opportunity. We have people here. They're showing up to talk with us and have this dialogue. And, you know, creating that advisory committee again, I think, is a good move. But we do need to move a little bit quickly, I think, to make sure that people do feel like we're hearing them. Um, because I, I'm kind of the sort of person that thinks about the – the opportunities that people don't have right now while we're not making these decisions. But I do want to make the best decision for the entire community and make sure that everybody has equitable access to these kinds of things. And I think there's so many opportunities we also have. I think I've said it before, because we've talked about this a lot, um, to partner with other entities like the school district. And we're meeting with them uh, this week and just talk a little bit more about access as we've worked through a little bit to their facilities, because they're centers of their community as well. And we have more access to some of those amenities and we can spread the, the wealth of assets, right? Or Weber State has great assets too. So um, I think there's some great possibilities, thinking outside the box a little bit, if it's not one big new center, but something else, whatever it might be, but um, I'm definitely willing to do the work to make it happen. So that's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Sorry if I no, that's okay. didn't mean to step in front of you there. Um, I, I wanted to add that uh, there's always, we're always going to agree or disagree and, and have these long conversations about process and what's right and what's wrong, etc. cetera. But um, I personally, am, I'm at a point and I'm not even emotional about it. I'm just matter of fact about it that we've talked about this for so long that um, in this position, I have uh, one vote. I have one voice. I've got a mic. I'm just, I'm just going to speak my conscience and, uh, and I am totally on board with having a decision by the end of this budget season. And I know where my decision is going to go and I'm not, I'll be uh, unabashed about it. Um, and so, but I'd also make the request in addition to that, that we uh, make a, re uh, that leadership consider scheduling um, YMCA to come in and give us a, uh, an update, uh, be transparent about the work yeah. um, that they haven't had an opportunity to share at the level at which I'm sure they're anxious to share. And, for, and so that the public can see the level of professionalism and passion and commitment to our, our kids that the people who are working on this that I've interacted with, um, that they have, they're amazing people with incredible hearts. And I would, I would just hate, and this has always worried me this whole time that we have this tremendous opportunity for our community, both at the YM, both with the YMCA and at the Marshall White. And I would, I don't want our inability or, um, unwillingness to make a decision quickly on, um, on existing facilities and existing need to get in the way of our ability to collectively support for everybody's need. Um, I think that we have the, we have tremendous opportunities before us. And if we, if we allow our mistrust to, to divide us, it's going to hurt all of us. I know it. And that really, really concerns me. So, um, I hope that there's uh, enough open mind and, and enough, uh, support in the community to, to listen and to, um, for us to truly come together on a, on a plan that works for as many people as we can, because there's a tremendous amount of need for indoor recreation. Like you said, Councilman Lopez, thank you. Thank you. All done. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you all so much. And thanks again for coming.
Uh, your engagement is so important to us. And with that, would you like to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn by Councilor Heyer. Second by Councilor Lopez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, everyone.